Let's add a custom fluid to Minecraft. Forging fabric courses with advanced topics such as entities, custom structures, and 3D armor models linked in the description below. Alright, we find ourselves back in IntelliJ once more, and in this tutorial, we're going to be adding a custom fluid to a Minecraft, another long awaited and highly suggested topic. So, for a custom fluid, we're just going to need a new package first and foremost, that is the fluid package. And inside of there, of course, we're going to make a new class called Mod Fluids. So I will be copying over quite a bit of the code, actually. So everything here is, of course, once again, available to you in the description below, GitHub repository and individual just as well. We'll start with the three resource locations as well as the deferred register. So the three resource locations we need, because this is basically the texture file for the water still flowing and overlay. And the general idea is that these are actually gray images that are colored and we can color them in just a moment when we actually create the properties for our custom fluid. So that's going to be fine. Uh, let's actually add the register method as well. Of course, when we have a deferred register here, we're going to have a register method and this we need to call right here. So we're going to say mod fluids dot register and then passing in the event bus right here there you go and then we can continue so what i will also copy over the registry objects once again i highly suggest you do the same and then we're gonna well basically take a look at what all of this is so you see we have so while they're both flowing fluids one of them is the forge flowing source and the other one is flowing this is incredibly important that you know that one of them is the source and one of them is flowing and then this one we call fluid this is a source and the other one we call flowing and this is a dot flowing incredibly important make sure that this is correct and you don't have it you know wrong basically and then of course the two big things are the liquid block as well as the properties so once again you can copy this as well and we're going to go through this as well so you can see these are the forge flowing properties so these are the properties of the particular fluid in this case and you can actually set a few things right here so you have this fluid attributes builder where first of all we have to pass in the resource locations of the still and the flowing water and then we can set the density luminosity viscosity and i actually think we can set a few more things as well there's temperature that we can set gaseous rarity uh, even the sound event we could set so those are some you know things you can set the luminosity density temperature viscosity and i believe even gaseous i'm not 100 sure about gaseous but i think that they actually don't do anything there's nothing there's no functionality behind them they're just basically there for um you know some things you can set there basically if other mods do something with fluids as well then they can use those numbers so you can see the sound we're setting is the honey drink here and then the overlay is just once again the normal water overlay now the color here, that is the first very, very interesting thing because this actually sets the color of this particular uh, fluid. Now the way that this works is this is a hexadecimal color right here, but this doesn't work like you would expect it to. Uh, RGBA, this is what you, you know, most people would expect. It is actually ARBG. I don't know why, it just is what it is. So this is RGB and then this here, the first two are actually the alpha values. So, so this is going to define the alpha values as well. And if you only have this, then it's just going to be RGB and that's going to be fine as well. And uh, there actually is, uh, you know, one thing that we need to do in just a moment to properly set the render layer as well. But we're going to do that in just a moment, as I've said. We also have the slope find distance and the level decrease per block. So the general idea here is that, so for, for both of them, basically it is just the distance that this fluid travels and also the distance where it tries to find a slope, basically. This is just the general idea. We can take a look at this, I believe. We can take a look at this. I believe that the properties here are taken from the flowing fluid. So this is the vanilla class flowing fluid. And we should be actually able to find this as well. Right, so that's the general idea here. Uh, once again, I can just highly recommend playing around with the numbers a little bit and taking a look at maybe even a few GitHub repositories from other mods that can also work very well. Then here we have the honey block. So this is the one thing, the one block I'm actually registering outside the mod blocks class because I just feel like it fits a little bit nicer in here. So you can see this is just a liquid block and it already has some particular, well, behavior properties set here. Now, what is very important is that even though, you, you know, you could hover over this and create, do it like this, right, with the actual uh, colon colon get, do not do this. You always should use the proper suppliers here. Otherwise, this might actually not work 
properly. So keep in mind, everywhere where we use suppliers right here, use suppliers. Even if, you know, the IntelliJ is like, hey, you could make this a little bit easier. No, you can't use the suppliers. Right, and last but not least, we also, of course, need the honey bucket here. So let's go into our mod items class and let's just create the bucket there. So let's go in here. This is going to be a bucket item and it's going to be, of course, the honey underscore bucket. There you go. Of course, also called honey underscore bucket. And this will take in as its first parameter, not the properties, but mod fluids dot honey fluid. Very important. We want the one that is the source block. So this one right here, honey fluid. And then of course, durability, that's ridiculous. No, what we have is actually stacks to one because of course a filled bucket only stacks to one. So for this item, we actually do need normal item model files and the registration and the translation. But first and foremost, we're going to go here into our client setup. And what we're going to do is we're going to set the render layer. So let's just go in here and there you go. We want to set this for the honey block, the honey fluid and the honey flowing. And they should all be translucent. After we've done that, we can now add the translation and the model files here. So let's just add the translation first, first and foremost here. There you go, the honey bucket right there. And then we can also add and then we can also add the item model file. This is actually, you know, fairly straightforward. It's just a normal item model file that points to a normal item texture. So nothing interesting really to see here. It's just a, uh, something that we've seen plenty of times already at this point. Let's just copy that over as well into the item folder. There you go, the honey bucket, and that should be fine. Now, there is one more very, very important thing that we need to do, and that is add our custom fluid to a Minecraft tag. And that is going to be in the data folder Minecraft tags. And then we need to make a new directory called fluids. Fluids, very important, with the S at the end. And then this is going to be the waters tag. So I'm going to actually going to just copy over another tag and call it water here. There you go. And then we're going to replace this with the actual contents. So this is going to be honey underscore flowing. And then also honey underscore fluid. So this is needed so that the fluid has actual physics and it's going to have the water physics. So at the moment, uh, at the least this is the last time I checked, there actually isn't anything we can do to get our own custom physics to working on this fluid, at least not without, you know, a lot of additional code and a lot of different things. So it just is what it is. But for the time being, this is going to work as well. So there are a little bit, you know, a few drawbacks basically, or, you know, a few concessions, so to speak, that we have to make for our custom fluid. But this will still add a custom fluid to Minecraft. And this is actually all of the things that we need. Like I said, everything available to you in the description below, GitHub repository and individual just as well. So you can take a look at that as well and copy a few things over. But, but for completion's sake, let's see if it works. All right, we find ourselves in Minecraft. And as you can see, the honey bucket has been successfully added to the game. So let's try and set it down. And there you go. It puts down the liquid and it also works. As you can see, the actual particles here are actually from water. And if I go like into the fluid and you can see the overlay is also blue and in water that is like I said just the thing that happens when you add it to the actual tag now I'm not 100% sure whether or not this would be a, an infinite source uh, that's actually a really good question so it isn't so it's not infinite but per default and if I actually switch to survival mode here I would also be able to pick it up and get a new honey bucket here if I set it down it also turns into a normal bucket we can also see basically the distance here. So it finds a slope. And then if we actually I think get a little bit more uh, of a distance here, let's say right here, for example, then you can see sort of roughly the distance that it travels. So it doesn't travel infinitely, but it does travel quite a bit. So you can see down here as well. Let's actually go down. Let's go back to creative mode. Let's set it down on the ground. There you go. And you can see it travels four blocks, as you can see. So the source block and then four and then three more blocks. So that should be pretty much all that there is to it. And that is pretty much also how you can add some custom fluid to Minecraft. All right, but that would already be it for this tutorial right here. I hope you found this useful and you learned something new. If you did, I would very much appreciate the like. And don't forget to subscribe for more tutorials just like this one. I also want to thank all of my lovely Patreon supporters for supporting me and this channel. It is very much appreciated. And I'll see you in the next tutorial. Oh, so, yeah.